As climate change warms waters around the world, hurricanes are intensifying more rapidly. We've got hotter oceans and hurricanes are heat engines. They take heat from the oceans, convert it to the kinetic energy of their winds. So if you've got a warmer ocean, you're going to get a stronger hurricane and it's also going to rapidly intensify. This was Hurricane Otis in 2023, slamming the coast near Acapulco, Mexico. It strengthened faster than nearly any other hurricane observed by scientists, growing from a Category 1 to a Category 5, stunning forecasters and leaving nearly 100 dead and many more missing. So we could be seeing a lot more hurricanes like Otis in our future prompting people around the world to wonder, can technology stop a hurricane? I mean, hurricanes obey the laws of physics, so certainly if you are able to cool off the surface of the ocean, in theory, you could reduce the intensity of a hurricane. Also, if you could change the amount of moisture flowing into the storm, you can also affect its intensity. Enter geoengineering, a term used to describe technologies designed to cool the world's climate, essentially hacking the oceans and the air above it. Norway-based Ocean Therm is testing its bubble curtain technology. The goal? Weakening a hurricane from the bottom up by cooling the ocean's warm surface temperature with the cold, deep water below. So the bubble curtain technology is perforated pipes that are lowered in the water. By blowing compressed air through these pipes, bubbles will rise up towards the surface and bring with them the colder water in the deep and reducing the sea surface temperature. And with the help of the natural ocean currents, that effect will be spread out to a larger area. And we believe you can do this at a large enough scale in order to uh, mitigate uh, intensity and in turn damages from uh, hurricanes and uh, typhoons. Norway has used bubble curtains for decades to keep its fjords free of ice, but its application to hurricanes is new. You need to, to lower the surface temperature of a very large area. What you need is basically sort of a forecasting system that says that, well, okay, there's a depression forming in, in the Atlantic, and then you need to figure out, well, if it moves in that area, where is it harvesting its energy? Then you have to go to the most promising areas where it's drawing this energy that will be released in the eye and the, the rain wall and, and try to lower the temperature there. They are planning an ocean field test in the coming years and hope to collaborate with the U.S. government. The idea is to have a fleet of vessels, each equipped with compressor capacity enough to operate about one mile of bubble curtains per vessel. And we think that about 60 of these vessels could operate together as a fleet to cover large enough areas to have a good effect on reducing the intensity of hurricanes. At this point, uh, we're still at a conceptual stage. Um, there's a lot of research that needs to be done. How large areas do we need to cool? where along the track of a hurricane do we need to intervene to have the best impact possible. But for this technology to be effective, the approach would need to overcome some major obstacles. If you're going to cool the ocean surface, some of these efforts, they're talking like it would be a billion dollars to put an array of pumps to pump up cold water to the surface. That's a big barrier. Now you're going to have to reroute shipping traffic to go around these barriers, maybe. So, you know, the shipping industry is going to be unhappy. Does that cold water stay at the surface? Cold water sinks, you know, is it going to be there long enough to have an inf impact? While the bubble curtain aims to curtail a hurricane from the ocean up, another approach is from the air. One way to do that would be to do cloud seeding, where you put in small particles into the storm those small particles act as nuclei around which water vapor will condense. So if you put small particles into the periphery of a hurricane, you can get more rain to fall in those outer spiral bands. And if that happens, you're choking off the moisture supply to the inner core where the strongest winds are and potentially weakening the maximum winds. 
Cloud seeding has been around for decades. It's weather modification. The goal? To change the amount or type of precipitation that falls from clouds. And in fact, the, the very first attempt to seed a hurricane way back in 1947, it happened to be the case where they dumped a bunch of cloud seeding uh, substance into the hurricane. And that hurricane did change course quite rapidly and suddenly it was going out to sea, it reversed course and hit South Carolina as a category two, whereas before it was only category one. So the public was very upset with the military. Oddly enough, there is evidence that we already cloud seed without really knowing it. We're modifying hurricanes all the time with the increased air pollution caused by burning fossil fuels. Hurricane Katrina in 2005, for instance, it was shown that we think it probably did a little bit of weakening before landfall because of this influence where these human caused particles seeded the outer parts of the storm invigorating the outer parts, but, you know, at the expense of the inner core. Geoengineering hurricanes from the land or the sea is only one approach. Another is using artificial intelligence. As technology advances, can the intuitive powers of AI be used to stop or at the very least minimize the effects of a hurricane? According to United Nations AI advisor Neil Sahoda, there is hope. We know the, the more data, the faster we can actually get to that to train these AI systems, the more rapidly we'll be able to, you know, hopefully predict and in some cases prevent hurricanes. Engineers are already working with AI to help people recover after a disaster. I mean, we've been able to leverage like AI powered drones already to kind of look for, you know, survivors or people that are stranded in areas, trying to figure out where we need to move water and food to, or we send, you know, uh, healthcare resources to. It's just one of those things where that was the first area we actually reacted to is like, how do we recover? Because impacts happen, what we do to alleviate pain. We kind of work it our way backwards now to say, okay, how do we do a better job of monitoring and tracking and how do we do a better job of detecting for many. AI may also be able to augment our existing computer models and data from hurricane hunters. This is just more advanced computer modeling, right? The, the power of AI is that it can process literally millions upon millions of data points together and it can actually scenario plan. So. There's something we call generative design with an AI that it can model out literally tens of millions of possibilities. And then based on realistic probabilities, real-time data as things change, quickly course correct. That's not something that we as humans can actually do. With each hurricane season, they gather more data, enabling AI to better predict where a hurricane is headed and save lives. But there are some obstacles that need to be overcome. Our biggest challenge right now is one, the parameters around a hurricane, and we know that we need more data in some of these points. We've never really been able to track the data inside the hurricane before. And now we're kind of at that point to start collecting that data. University of Colorado in Boulder is actually right now uh, developing these, like a fleet of autonomous drones that we can actually try and take into the heart of a hurricane because that's data we normally don't get. The eye would give us a much better prediction pattern of which way the hurricane will actually turn as increasing in strength, decreasing in strength. So you, you give it another three, four years, we'll be looking back and thinking right now we're in the stone age with what we've got. Certainly AI is very impressive how some AI hurricane prediction models that are doing as well as the traditional supercomputer models that have been running for generations. So yeah, I'd say there's some unknown unknowns out there as far as AI or other technology that could be a thing in the future that we don't expect that maybe we'll come up with a solution we don't understand right now. Innovation in technology is moving at the speed of light, doing things now we would have never imagined years ago. So it may just be a matter of time that technology can get a handle on hurricanes. But according to Neil Sahota, we're not there just yet. Ten years, we might have a climate control system that we can actually deploy to maybe not just mitigate, but prevent or at least have controlled hurricanes because they'll never go away permanently. So as of now, technology cannot stop a hurricane. 
but perhaps it will in the not so distant future. And with our improving intelligence, invention, and ingenuity leading the charge, we can keep improving predictions and saving lives. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.